Truth Tables, Part 2, Constructing Complex Tables. Truth Tables display the possible truth values of claims. They allow us to evaluate the truth values of claims as they become increasingly complex. And they allow us to test arguments for validity. Consider the truth table for the conjunction. And imagine what would happen if the whole conjunction were negated. Now remember, when we negate a claim, any claim, whether simple or complex, we flip the truth values. So if that claim is true, the negated claim is false. If that claim is false, the negated claim is true. So if we look at our truth table for P and Q, we see that all the truth values under the ampersand are flipped when we add the negation. This is a more complicated truth table than you saw in part one. In this case, we treat P and Q like a single term, like a single claim, and apply the negation to the connective, to the column that's under the connective. The negation changes the truth value of the claim it operates on, and that's so regardless of whether it's simple, as in P, or complex, as in P and Q. So every time you find a complex claim with multiple operators, treat each operated claim like a singular term. Let's take our negated conjunction and disjoin to it a conditional. So we have, it's not the case that P and Q, or if Q then P. We still have only two non-repeated terms, so we only need four rows. To know how to construct the rest of this table, we need to know what the major operator is. In any complex claim, there is one connective that has the final word on the truth value of the claim. This is called the major operator. The major operator is the operator that's not affected by any other operators. So in P and Q, the, oper the major operator, which is the only operator, is the AND. In it's not the case that P and Q, the major operator is the negation. It changes or affects the truth value of the AND claim. And in our new claim, either it's not the case that P and Q, or if Q then P, the negation is operated on as well. It's operated on by the disjunction. So the disjunction in this case, since it's not operated on or not affected by any other operators, it's the major operator. We'll construct the truth table for the major operator last. So, since the major operator will be the last column we fill in, now we need to know the truth table for the conditional. We know our truth table for the negation. It's not the case that P and Q. So we fill in the truth table for if Q, then P. Now we can complete our table. Apply the truth table for the disjunction to the major operator of each disjunct. So this is going to be the column under the negation for the left disjunct and the column under the conditional for the right disjunct. Taking those two columns and applying the truth table for the disjunction, we can formulate our column underneath the disjunction. In this case, all trues. If your claim or argument includes more than two unrepeated claims, your truth table will be longer. You'll need more rows to accommodate possible truth values. Recall that the way you determine the number of rows you need is to place the number of unrepeated claims as the exponent of two. If you have two claims, that's two to the second. If you have three claims, two to the third, four claims, two to the fourth. Let's look at a complex claim with three unique claims. This requires eight rows. Start by making half the values for P true and half false. Then take those trues and make half of those the opposite. So we'll have two trues and two falses. Do the same for the falses. Make half of those trues. To keep it simple, have a true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false pattern. 
end by alternating trues and falses. You can do this for any truth table. The very last non-repeating term will be alternating trues and falses. You can start this direction too. You can start with the last term and then build up, doubling the number of trues and falses. Now you're ready to complete the truth table for this more complex claim. So to save time and space, construct the truth table with the operators already in place. Underneath the AND, we apply the truth table for the conjunction to get the truth table for P and Q in this more complex claim. Then we take the column under the ampersand, the conjunction, and the column under R, which is by itself a simple claim, and we apply the truth table for the disjunction. So in this case, you see the two columns in white. They're going to result in the column in yellow when we apply the truth table for the disjunction. And this is the complete truth table for this disjunction. For more on truth tables, see the video part three, using truth tables to test for validity.